just flew in on my private jet. Did you see that? I don't have a private jet. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Kraft, and on this episode of True Abundance Interview, we come to you from the Windy City, Chicago. Today, I'm gonna chat with the CEO of Golden Ceramics Dental Lab. 50 people in this lab, such a great facility. We're gonna find out how it all started. You ready? Good, come on. is a big lab to grow to this size. This incredible facility, it takes a lot of hard work, takes a strong team, but it takes a great leader. We're gonna chat with that leader. His name is Ben Topaz. He started Golden Ceramics a little over 20 years ago. But to bring Golden Ceramics to the next level, he hired a guy named Michael Sasani. Now, he also won an award earlier this year. We're gonna talk about that. He's head of research and development. We're gonna find these guys right here. Ben, Michael, how you guys doing? Nice meeting you. Good. Nice how to meet you? you guys. You, you guys have such a great story, how you came together, but building this team, building this company to where it is now, I want to hear all about it. Can you guys chat? Definitely. Okay, perfect, let's go. I want to dig in a little bit with you guys, find out a little bit more about your background, how you guys got started. Mike, I know you kind of run the R&D, the digital side. Uh, ben, the CEO, you run this whole place. And yes. you know, we were just talking, as long as you're hearing some noise, chiseling going on, that means there's work going on. Is that like it every single day? Yeah, that's how it is all day and that's what we want to hear. If it's quiet, it means either everybody's at lunch or nothing's getting made. So we like to hear the chiseling, the airlines, everything working, everything's grinding. Yeah. It means it's reproducing, yes. Do you consider this to be a, a large lab, a bigger lab? So I was told about a year ago that if you have more than 35 employees, you consider the big lab. Okay. I still feel like we're pretty small because I looked at all look at all the giants up there. Yeah. But um, we're making our way. We're growing around 30% a year. Okay. Um, we keep on taking more space, adding employees, adding technology. Now we have an RD guy which we never had, so we're researching before we buy. Um, so we're getting to that level that will be considered a big lab, yes. What is your business background? How did you get involved in this crazy um, dental lab world? So I got into it actually accidentally. Went to play some soccer with some other Israeli guys. One of them had a lab and he did it a driver because his driver was on vacation. Um, it took me about five years to learn the whole operation and I opened my own. And that's it? Yeah. So I started as a driver. In between driving, I went and sat next to the waxer, next to the model room, next to learned hands-on, came on weekend practice, and when I had enough in the bank, I just opened my small lab. So, I mean, running a business is very different than just going, you know, I, I know this, I understand this, and I think I can grow this, but maintaining a business is very different. How, how do you have that knowledge? So, for about 10 years, I worked very hard in building the lab. What I was missing to grow it to a bigger lab was the administration side, the, the business side of it. So running production and looking into materials, and I love what I do, so I love being here and doing it. I was missing that aspect of running the payroll, the insurance, the employee benefits, all the stuff that I never looked at. And then my wife joined me. And she took all of that over, and she comes from the corporate nonprofit world. Okay. And she took all of that over and turned it into a bigger business. So she runs that whole side of it, yeah. and we make sure we produce to accommodate for so that. important. So, yeah. so, so it's essentially, I mean, she is the boss. You yeah. just have the CEO if, title, if, but she really runs. If you it ask all. everybody here, she's the boss. She's. A <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to research, Mike, that's where you come in. How did you get introduced uh, to this great company? I wanted to grow a little bit and I left my job. I was uh, in Miami, Florida. I left my job. Um, my background is uh, I went to dental school, but I've never finished um, due to uh, a little bit of uh, uh, misfortune. Uh, I'm uh, originally from the Middle East okay. and the situation was a little bit rough over there. Yeah. So I had to leave that area and then um, I came to Miami. And I worked in a high-end lab. I learned a lot. And then one day, I was like, I should go back to dental school. And then I ended up here in Chicago. Uh, but because uh, dental school is a little bit more expensive than what I thought, um, 
I was extracting my wisdom tooth and then the dentist, he asked me, hey, what do you do for a living? I was like, I'm a dental technician. And then he introduced me to Ben and then we called that a day and we started working together. Let's talk about the digital side now. When you were analog and you went over to, you know, become as fully digital as yep. possible, what was the productivity? What was the profitability like, you know, immediately? It had to have been substantial. Yeah, so at the, at the beginning it's how to really, when you're not in it yet, it's how to look at it and say this is going to become really profitable because to operate all this equipment with the cost, you right. have to have a large production um, to justify that expense and that production. So it took us a good year to figure out our workflows, how we're becoming more profitable, who do we buy with, who do we partner with. It's all about your vendors, your relationships, your customers, and how you show it to your customers. There's so many other products that we want to bring out there, but to sell it to our customers, we need to educate them. One of the things that we do every year is we invite our dentist to the dental lab show. They go to the dental show, we bring them to dental lab show. The vendors are selling it to us, but we need to sell it to our customer that never heard about it. So we try to bring our customers to the dental lab show so they see all of it and get excited about it. It's, it's, it's a hot sell on a lot of this new stuff because a lot of doctors are skeptical how much research is on it, how many yeah. years it's been out there. Mike's been great in experimenting with it, bringing it to life in the lab. And then our job and my wife's jobs with marketing is to bring it out to our customers so they order it. So as we bring new customers, there is a challenge of learning how to use it, how to create a workflow for it. But then a bigger challenge is actually how you get it into the hands of the customer. How do you get them to order it? Talk to me about the rest of the team because your team is, I mean, 50 employees. What do you look for? What's your criteria to build this team? So I think the most important thing for us is personalities. You need to be part of a team. We don't want anybody sitting not involved or doing his thing, getting up and leaving. We do company lunches here once or twice a month so everybody sits together and eat lunches. Uh, every team has, we have managers, we have general managers, managers of department and supervisors in departments. The atmosphere is most important. If everybody feels that they're connected, everybody wants to help everybody. Everything goes through so many hands that you want the guy that sits there and finishes his work and looks at the guy next to him and say, I'm going to help him out because I don't have enough today or I finished mine and not just sit there and just kill the day with what he has, the guy next to him is buried. Because you can get 10 cases each, but one of them can be very complicated, one of them can be easier, one of them can run into problems, another one cannot. So as long as everybody helps everybody, you'll be productive and people will be happy. That's a strong, amazing culture to have. And it's tough to build that. It's tough to maintain that as well. It's, it's, it's very hard to maintain that. Yeah. Very hard to. Both me and my wife are here all day. I want to come to work and see smiley faces. I don't want to come here and feel like, I don't want to look at anybody. Yeah. I, I want to joke around with the employees. Everybody has time for their coffee. I want people to talk between them. I want the atmosphere to be good. It, it, it's so important. I want to talk about the relationship with True Above and Michael because that is why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> is because of you. Why True Abutment? And talk to me about the relationship that's continued to grow. And you know, what are some of the strengths and the weaknesses of True Abutment? What would you want in return? And what has True Abutment done to help? It started, I believe, uh, 2019. We do like producing custom abutments because uh, in technicalities, it helps better than just getting uh, you know, a stock abutment or uh, a temporary abutment that you're going to use for a final work. And this is where um, I was able to find True Abutment. And what uh, drove me to start the business with them uh, was definitely the prices that they have, uh, the quality that they have, um, the, titan the quality of the titanium uh, that they use as, uh, you know, one of the best. Uh, and uh, literally, so far, knock on wood, zero failures with their implants. Uh, no hex breaking, no, um, you know, screws breaking, which is awesome. Um, and that gives you um, the green light to continue working with, uh, with this company. Let me ask you, Van, do you feel like the, the number one 
uh, suggestion that you would give somebody looking to get into this industry, dental lab, the dental industry in general, is to exhaust all your options when it comes to digital? Oh yeah. Why? You can't continue doing what you're doing 40 years ago and compete price-wise, material-wise, quality-wise. Technology just makes us better, just makes us faster. Um, and if you're not on that wagon, and you're not getting into it right now, there's no reason for you to be in the industry. Because that's where it's going. And that's what the dental schools are doing now. Dental schools are teaching now all the students how to print in their own practice when they graduate, um, how to design, how to scan. Everything's going digital. If you're not going to be part of that trend, you're going to still sit and hand wax stuff and cast it. There's no reason for you to stay. You either come in fully digital or don't come in at all. It's not going to work otherwise. To do the amount of work we do here with the 50 employees, without all these milling units and printers, we needed 120 employees. And we needed to charge 40% more on every crown. So if I, a lab that doesn't have a milling unit needs to send their crowns, if they have a design, they have to send it to us to mill. Now they have to pay my cost plus my profit, so now they have to charge their customers more than I do. So they can't compete with me to begin with, and I'm milling their crowns. So the equipment today, when I bought my first milling unit, it was around $80,000. It was a simple, single pack, no pack changer, no wet option. Today you can get those for, I don't know, 30000 The cost of becoming digital is not that expensive anymore. And you have to become digital. Like us, like our teeth, like that. Okay, everybody, like big that. smile. Michael, thank you so much for letting me come in, take over, showing me this incredible facility. You built such a great team. Well, thanks for stopping by. It was a pleasure having you. You can come in anytime you want. Awesome. And we need to get back to work, so. You need to get back to work, yeah. Michael? Pleasure. All right, he said you got to get back to work. That's my cue. Thanks a lot, you thank guys. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Another great episode in the books. A couple of great guys right there. Join us next time on another episode of Through Abutment Interview, won't you?